James, usually I love when the phone rings and your name pops up today was just was just different. And I heard it in your voice uh, when, when you said to me that Diane had walked in and said they're being reported on TMZ, that, that Kobe is helicopters crash, and we didn't want to believe it. Um, yeah. and, and I still don't want to believe it, big game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that you, uh, you just don't want to hear, and you can't believe it when you hear it. Um, just I I extremely devastating. You know, you, you know, my mother used to always say, you, you can't put a question mark behind God's period. You know, uh, something has happened uh, to a great person, uh, a, a father who had given us everything. That was his gift to us. And our gift to him at 41 years old was to allow him to live a life with his kids and, and be free from all the the, the microscopic things that, that he had been under his entire career. He was a great man. Kobe was a good dude. Uh, very young when he came in. I remember he was a rookie, and I was a rookie in the television industry. Mm -hmm. It was my first year. And I remember getting an interview with him, and all I heard was, yes, sir, no, sir. And I told him, I said, stop, I'm not that much older than you. He said, yes, sir, no, sir. And then his game suffered. Uh, at the beginning, he struggled a little bit, but, uh, you know, this is, uh, and, and, and the other people that were, that were on the, on the helicopter as well. Yeah. Uh, it's going to affect a lot of people. A lot of people. But Kobe is, uh, you know, you just don't know what to say. We, we're, we're, we're at a loss for words, but this is a time um, that as Laker Nation, that the only thing we can do as a Laker Nation and Laker fans, it's lean on each other. There are no words for this. And his beautiful daughter that we had seen so many clips. You just don't want to, to hear a story like this. So the only thing we can do is yeah. remember. Uh, it's not going to pinch us till months from now. But, uh, I, you know, I, his, his, uh, his last year, I got a call from Gary Vitti at 10 o'clock at night saying, Kobe wants you to come meet him at the gym at 9.30. I said, for what? Nothing I can teach him. He, he wanted to know about footwork. So his, his drive. That was for, late in his career. Life. It, was just, yeah. it was just late in his career. Yeah. He just wanted to. I'd already seen him score 80 points and just demonstrate all the footwork that I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Even some that I didn't know. Yeah. And he wanted me to meet him at the gym so he could ask me how to enhance some of the things he was doing. So his... His, his drive for life, speaking multiple languages, what he was going to do uh, going forward is just, uh, this is going to be a tough lump in the throat. We appreciate you coming over here. You were on the plane uh, with the Los Angeles Lakers, returning from Philadelphia this morning, just landed about an hour ago, and here you are. I don't need you to give me the intimate details of what that was like, but what can you share uh, from, from how that went down. Yeah, it was a five-hour flight, left about 11.30 Philadelphia time. The team stayed over in Philly last night after playing the game out there. <clears throat> and uh, not even halfway through the flight, somebody was online and, and realized, you know, the news. And at first, it was just kind of stunning. It's like, this can't be real. And, and then you realize that there's some confirmation. And, and then that's when the emotions started to pour out. And, and it just became a very... A uh, stunning moment. Uh, I will never forget it in my life. And, and so many people on that plane with so many connections to Kobe. Uh, players were emotional, too. None of these guys uh, even played with Kobe on the current day Lakers, but a lot of them played against him. And they know what he meant to this league, and they know what he was like as a father, and uh, a lot of sadness on that flight. Yeah, and some of those players, dear friends with Kobe. Sure. I mean, for LeBron James, just last night, he passes Kobe, <clears throat> excuse me, on the all-time scoring list and he spent Brez his entire you were there his entire uh, interview talking about Kobe Bryant what Kobe meant to the game and what he meant to him and what an honor it was to share this stage with him and, and I'm sure for for LeBron and, and other people on that plane that that had a relationship with Kobe Bryant that this was really difficult yeah it, it doesn't make sense it, it's still here we are several hours later trying to <clears throat> process it and that's LeBron James right there uh, none of the players were uh, talking publicly uh, about Kobe's passing uh, the, the franchise is still processing everything, uh, understandably. 
And, and you know, Kobe, for, for all the stories of him being this amazing competitor, which, Rob, you played with him. You know them firsthand, obviously. And, James, you spent plenty of time with him as well. But he had a softer side to him. He was the first teammate, ex-teammate, I should say, to, to go by Lamar Odom's bedside when Lamar was in a coma several years ago in Vegas. Uh, you could stop by Kobe's locker a couple hours before the game when the media had access and could talk to players and say, hey, what happened to your Philadelphia Eagles and start up some banter. Just kind of kind of get to get to know him <clears throat> a little bit. Uh, I wrote a story a few years ago, uh, about a month into what would be Kobe's final season. He, he had not announced his retirement yet. And the story was co-written with Brad Turner, who, who comes on our shows plenty of times. And uh, it was talking about Kobe's rapidly declining skills on the court. And we said, you know what, he's not going to like this story, is he? But sure enough, two days later, uh, I was up in Portland, I believe, and there's like a playful tap on my shoulder. And I turn around, and there's Kobe. He's kind of smiling like, all right, I read the story. You know, I'm going to try to prove you wrong. Yeah. But, of course, uh, shortly after that, he did declare that that would be his last season as a basketball player. And I'm still just stunned that he, he's not with us anymore. You know, this is where I was always excited for someone who was so great and so special at his craft, at the game of basketball. When that comes to an end, what are they going to do next? You know, and Kobe, you talked about it. He earned himself an Oscar. He had a book. He dove into the women's game. He attended games. He watched games. You know, there was... Hmm. Never a yeah. moment. You didn't see him without one of his kiddos. Yeah. One of his daughters that he loved. You know, he gives back. I think you bring up such an amazing point. Um, and I remember asking him in 2017, we sat down for a Connected With interview. He was about to have both his jerseys retired. And I said, you know, everyone wants to know if you're coming back to basketball. Are you going to be a coach or a GM? He looked at me and said, are you out of your mind? <laughs> are you crazy? He's like, no, I'm on to the next thing. I'm, I'm on to coaching my daughter's team. I'm on to being with my family. I'm on to creating. And he didn't know he was going to win an Oscar at that point. It was actually that day that he had been nominated, and he was so proud of that moment, maybe mm. just as proud as he was as winning those championships. So, uh, bit, you know, to remember Kobe Bryant in that way, I'm glad you, you, you brought that up. I'm Chris McGee with Robert Ory and Allie Clifton as we continue the coverage of Kobe Bryant's death. He was among five people found dead in a helicopter crash in Calabasas uh, Sunday morning. Rob, I'm going to start with you. I know this is a hard time for everyone. Uh, you good friends with Kobe, um, three championships together. Um, I'll let you take the floor. You know, the thing about Kobe Bryant, I remember when I got traded to the Lakers and there was all this hype around this little 18 year old kid that's a phenom. And I was like, whatever, you know, and I got in practice and I remember one of the first plays I went to set a pick on him. And he tried to run through the pick. And I looked at him and says, okay, young fella, I see you got some grit and some grind to you. And from that moment on, you can see the maturation of this guy, the importance of getting better, the importance of being a great teammate, and him being a sponge. You know, we use that term so much in basketball, but he literally learned from B. Shaw. He learned from me. He learned from Glenn Rice. He learned from all these guys and became one of the best basketball players ever. And for this to happen to uh, a, a great basketball player, a great father, a great human being, a guy who was just trying to, you know, expand himself beyond basketball is, 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 is a huge tragedy. You know, the thing I think about with Kobe is just how much he transcended beyond just the NBA, beyond uh, just the male athlete, uh, being a little girl, six, seven years old, in the backyard. You know, Kobe was my generation growing up. It was the 3-2-1, hit the game winner, you thought you were Kobe. Um, and I had my first opportunity in Cleveland in the NBA. Uh, in November, Lakers came to town, and my producer gave me a call and said, I want you to go cover Kobe at shoot-around. I was shaking. I was sweating. <laughs> it's basketball, Allie. But that's Kobe Bryant. Yeah, the excitement. Yeah, there's no question. And, and I think for a lot of my friends and, and a lot of Laker fans, that have lived here our whole lives and, and seen Kobe grow up. And, and Rob, you can speak to this. Yeah. You know, you've seen the different 
levels of Kobe Bryant, that 17, 18 year old kid that kind of had to wait his time the first couple years, even though he wanted to be starting. Mm -hmm. wasn't until that third year where he started all 50 games to winning those three championships, to then having those few years without Shaq where he was scoring all the points but the team wasn't doing well. And then that second time around where he won those two championships in 2009 and 2010, winning the MVP in 2008. He became, according to D. Fish and Luke Walton and all those guys, Lamar Odom, more of a team guy, more of a leader, sit, sit, sit with them on the plane. So he opened up in a different way. And then to see him post Achilles and the last couple years opening up uh, to the media, spending 30, 40 minutes in a post-game show. Rob, probably crazy for you to see all those different levels of Kobe as well, but that's why yes. I always explain to people, Kobe's ours. Like, yeah. we watched him from 17 years old until this. Yes. You, know? you know, you grew up with Kobe, and if you watch the guy, he came in the league with a chip on his shoulder. I can remember times where, you know, after games, you know, a lot of guys would be mad at Kobe because back then you would bring beer in the locker room. Yeah. But when you got Kobe, it's an 18-year-old like, man, where's the beer? You know, <laughs> you can't have it because Kobe's in there. Oh, we got Kobe Bryant. But, you know, it, it, Kobe started developing, you know what, I'm becoming this guy where, you know, this locker room is going to become my locker room. I'm going to be that guy where everybody's going to look up to me. And he, he tried to build up that armor. I call it, he put this armor around, around him where he was like, you know what, I'm going to be this guy. I'm going to be this king of this team. And I'm going to kind of like distance myself from the players, even though he didn't really distance himself from us because yeah. we brought him back into the fold because we were such a fun loving group. Me, B. Shaw, D. Fish, uh, and Rick Fox, we all brought him back in the fold and made him enjoy games with us and show him that it's not always yeah. business. You can enjoy basketball by having a little fun at times, but then you need to switch it off and be business like. And he had so many moments like that with individuals. I remember we were coming back from a trip, I don't remember where, and we were sitting there playing cards. And you could see the young side of him. He was looking like, what are you playing? I'm like, well, are we playing space. I'm like, you don't know how to play space? Like, no. I said, what black man in America don't know how to play space? <laughs> you know? And so he, I, I sat there, and I taught him how to play space. And yeah. it was just one of those things where he was like, he made it. And for him, he kept losing. But you know Kobe. He wanted to win. Let's play again. Let's play, Let's again. play again. Let's yeah. play again until he finally got it. And it's just little things like that where you can see, you know, he was trying to break into the mold to get to know older guys. And I think some people don't understand, when you have an 18-year-old come into a team with a bunch of 28, 30-year-old guys who are going out, yeah. going to a club and drinking, it was kind of hard for him to mix with those guys. But eventually, you know, that, you know, that, that shell, that armor was broken. I use armor because yeah. the body armor, you know, his, 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 his company. But he broke that armor, and he became more of a teammate. And he started, you know, coming to functions and doing that. I just wish I would have been a part of that, Kobe Bryant, because that would have been a special moment for me to get to know, you know, the two different guys. Yeah, and he was always about the moment. Like, Ali, think about it like this. I mean, I'm sure Bulls fans remember this with Jordan and, and all the young kids growing up in Ohio with LeBron. with LeBron. When they played, you thought you had a chance to win. For 20 years, every you time he every stepped time on the floor, you, you thought, I have this guy on my team. Yes. We have a chance. There's an incredible mm -hmm. pressure that comes with that. I think the weight of the city and all the fans, he embraced that. It's such a rare quality to have. I think that's why 2009, 2010 meant so much to him, Rob. Of course, those three with you guys did. But remember, everyone was gone. Yeah. Phil was gone. Phil came back. Mm -hmm. You know, Shaq was gone. Rob yeah. was gone. And, and to win those, I think, meant a lot to Kobe Bryant because he was feeling it. Yeah. You know? I, I think, you know, it became his team. Yeah. You know, back then it was kind of Phil's team. Shaq team, and he was kind of like the third man. Even though Phil wasn't a player, yeah. he was still kind of like the third stringer. And I think when he got a chance to say, this is my team, my crew, I put this team together, you know, Phil was like, you know, you're coming back to me now. Mm -hmm. Now you 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 under my realm. You yeah. know? So, and I, I think that was a key for him to say, hey, this is, I can show you, I, can, I don't need Shaq. I can carry a team. I can be the finals MVP. And I think that was really important for him to showcase what he could do and that he could actually lead a team because we all know he was a leader, but he just had another big daughter like Shaq that was just a dominant force. And it just gives you that next level insight to why fans love and, and worship this individual. Yeah. Because all along those ways, not only did he embrace the challenge, did he want the pressure, but he allowed the fans and the people from the outside to feel a part. And as you mentioned, to always know that that guy that you rooted for gave you a chance to win every single time, but he made you feel a part of that. Yeah. And that's family, and that's why you guys can sit here, especially now I get to be a part of this, and say he is ours. Yeah. You know, he is, he is the face of the Lakers for so many 